Hey, seventh grade. Um, I am going to go ahead and share the link to Google Classroom if any of you are available right now. Um, sorry, I'm finally just able to um, hop on. Maddie required a lot of attention today. At those of you with um, little siblings, you probably understand the struggle. So um, I am going to do my read aloud first. I know that there were some questions. Um, hold on one second. Here's JP, by the way. JP. Typing read aloud. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm uh, obviously I'm live right now, but if you click on this later, it will be recorded. So here we go. Um, so to answer some of your questions, a lot of you are like, where is essay number two in the grade book? How come it's not there? I'm working on it. Um, my goal was to have them done a while ago, but as you know, things just kind of took a turn, I guess, between my kids getting sick and apparently the whole world getting sick. Um, there's that, but you know what? We will persevere and we will be fine and nobody, we're gonna practice our social distancing from the world. <gasps> Do you see yourself? Is that GP? Are you gonna be famous? Yeah? Wow, so cool. Yeah, we're gonna do some reading. Hope you don't mind it. He's very squirmy, so I don't know if it's gonna be a good idea to have him in here while I do this, but we'll we'll try it. Okay, so when we left off, less, last left off. Uh, Lucy was finding out a little bit more about her mom's research, and she was going, uh, the next chapter is called Vernon Divine, which was one of the people, or which was the other person on her mom's proposal. So here we go. I rode the rest of the way home in a funk of fish guts and sweat. I was thinking about Sookie tagging sharks and a liquid squid with three hearts. I needed a biologist to explain how both of those things could work. But instead, I saw Mr. Patterson, a retired engineer. Mr. Patterson was in his chair on the porch. He had fed an extension cord through a crack in the screen door, connected to a box fan that blew at his feet. Hey, Mr. Patterson, I said, ascending the steps. Hello, Lucy. Can I share your breeze, I asked. Go right ahead. I took a seat on the warm floor planks at Mr. Patterson's feet. Neighbors are supposed to check on old people when it's hot outside to make sure they're okay. You okay? What do you think, he asked. I don't know. I'm just checking. It's only 85 degrees and we live a block from the ocean, but thanks. I nodded. It's good to see you out and about. He poured a, gl a glass of poop brown water from a Tupperware pitcher and handed it to me. Here, you're sweating like a pig. Thanks, I said. Lived an iced tea. Sweet, but no longer cold. Do I smell like fish? Like what? Fish. I was working with Sookie. Mr. Patterson raised his eyebrows. How did that go? Okay, I think. I took a sip of tea. Did you know Sookie was going to help my mom with the research project? Mr. P shook his head. Yeah, she was going to tag great white sharks, I said. I've been trying to figure it out, but I think I need to go to grad school first. No, you're smart. You'll make sense of it. What did Sookie have to say about it? Not much, I said. There was this other guy, Vern, divine. He named, his name is on the front of the proposal. Why don't you call him, Mr. Patterson asked. What? I asked. No, he lives in Maine. And besides, I guess he's really old. Mr. Patterson looked at me in disbelief. Sorry, that's not what I meant. Mr. Patterson took another sip of tea. I haven't been to Maine in a long time. B and I used to spend a couple of weeks in, of the summer in South Freeport. I like Maine. All those pine trees and islands. Not so many people up there. Mr. Patterson brought the hot iced tea to his lips, his long liver-spotted fingers gripping the glass. He wore a chunky gold ring and kept nearly tri neatly trimmed nails. I wondered if it helped his French horn playing to have such long fingers, like a pianist. He cleared his throat and started again. We used to take a boat, ba barely seaworthy, not to French's islands, sit on the bench or sit on the beach and drink moxie. I pictured Mr. Patterson and his wife on a scratchy wool, wool blanket at the edge of the tide. 
at first. I imagined them in their 70s, and then I guessed what they would look like in their 20s. I put Mr. Patterson in a pair of white shorts with skinny white legs sticking out, and I gave Mrs. Patterson a big sun, sun hat and a bathing suit, imagining moxie bottles in the sand. This stuff tastes awful, I said. We thought it tasted pretty darn good. He, he looked at his glass before putting it on the wooden table. Whole lot better than this weasel pee. This stuff is terrible, I said, parking the glass on the porch floor. Do you miss Mr. Patterson? I asked. It was a dumb question, but I wanted to hear him talk about her more. He didn't answer directly. My wife, no matter where we went, she wore red lipstick as bright as a stoplight. I always wanted to kiss her, but I knew I'd get better. I'd get that junk all over my face. He clasped his hands away, away over his stomach. Most of the time, I did it anyway. He must have read my mind because he said, You think I always looked like this? I gave him the palms up gesture. Maybe. When I look in the mirror, I think, Who is that old man? I still feel like I'm 19 years old. Honest. I didn't know any 19-year-olds who sat on the porch all day and listened to police scanners. But I like the idea. I remember things from decades ago better than I remember things from last week. I remembered when uh, Stuffy McGinnis from Gloucester was traded to the Red Sox in 1917. He played with Babe Ruth, Ruth in the 1918 World Series before the curse. What a fielder. Who's Stuffy McGinnis? He threw his hands in the air. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, Lucy. He was part of the 100 grand infield. Eddie Collins, Frank Banker, Jack Berry, but that was before his stint with the Sox. One hundred thousand dollars before four, between four guys. He uh, he couldn't have been that good. These are nineteen oh nine prices. Okay, okay. Tell me something else you remember. I said, even though I loved Sox trivia and riling up Mr. Patterson, he scrunched his lips while he retrieved a thought. My mother's rhubarb pie. She made it every June when I when my sisters and I were young. I like rhubarb pie, I said. I have a terrible sweet tooth. Do you like gummies? Do I like what? Gummies, like gummy bears, Coke bottles, worms. No, I don't think so, he said, fanning himself with the TV week. I forgot about the heat for a moment. You're pretty chatty today, I finally said. Maybe I'm delirious from this heat. It's a good thing you checked up on me. Hang on one second. Got to play Frozen for Maddie downstairs. Okay, sorry. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, there's six of you on. Hi guys. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I don't remember where I was. Okay, so the TV. Oh, he was fanning himself with the TV week. I forgot about the heat for a minute. You're pretty chatty today. Maybe I'm delirious from the heat. It's a good thing you checked up on me. He grinned and gestured across the street to my driveway. Your father's doing okay. I don't know, I said. He doesn't talk about himself much. Was he always like this? Mr. Patterson's brow wrinkled like he was thinking carefully about his answer. What do you remember, he asked. I remember a real dividing line between what is what it was like before she died and what it was like after. They were just my parents, and I didn't have to worry about anything. Mr. Patterson nodded. But now, Dad seems a lot less happy. He works a lot. He used to read to me, or we draw together at night. We haven't done that in a long time. I knew your, your mom her whole life. She was born in that house, just like you were, Mr. Patterson said, pointing at my house again. She was one of my favorite people on earth. And I remember when she started bringing your dad around. He was quiet even then, and we were all a little d skeptical. But he turned out to be a good man, took care of your grandmother when she got sick, and boy, was he good with you when you were little. He'd take you on walks in the backpack all over town. He brought you and Fred down to the water and showed you the tide pools. So why is he so weird now, I asked. I don't know for sure, Mr. Patterson said. But I think it might be that your mother helped him connect with people. She invited his friends to dinner. She handed him the phone. He was prone to turning inward, and she helped him look more outward. I know everyone is wired differently, Lucy, but you can't be a, an island. 
I couldn't help looking at Mr. Patterson, sitting on his worn cushion between the two radios, wondering if he was a bit of an island himself. I look, took the photo of Mom, Dad, and Sookie out of my pocket and handed it to Mr. Patterson. He studied it closely. They were good friends, Mr. Patterson looked at me for a moment. Tell your dad I'll be over to see if he needs anything at the store. I'll let him know, I said, peeling my legs off the porch planks. I have to clean up myself. When I walked in uh, the door to my house, I headed straight to the bathroom for a shower. Dad was in the kitchen eating a snack. Why do squids have three hearts? I asked, walking upstairs. Good question. I don't know, he said. Before shedding my clothes, I took the photo out of my pocket and tacked it. It's okay. And tacked it to the bulletin board. It's okay. As I scrubbed off the fish guts, I thought about calling uh, Vernon Devine, but I chickened out. It's okay. Um, I worked. Okay. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Yeah. Okay, let's keep reading. I worked on some sketches for the field guide at the at the kitchen table. One of Mom's books was open to a photograph of white shark, of a white shark. In my sketchbook, I drew the outline of the shark's body. I feel like all the sharks I draw look like sandbags. I yelled to Dad in the other room. He half laughed. What? Dad hobbled into the kitchen on one crutch, like nothing is going on inside. Do they ha even have bones? Um, do they even have bones? I said. I get how the human body is put together, but I don't get what's happening inside a shark. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, Dad started flipping pages until he came to an anatomy shot. That's what's going on, he said, pointing to an illustrated cross section of a shark. I saw a number of labels for familiar organs, liver, kidney, intestines, but there was nothing human like about the way the shark's organs were arranged. Besides, when I drew people, I sometimes thought about muscles and bones, but never the heart. This isn't helping, I said. Here's a vertebrate. It's not a bone. It's cartilage. It's lightweight and flexible, so they can move quickly, he said. They don't have swim bladders, so heavy, so heavy bones uh, would make them sink. I traced the backbone with my finger and decided to start with the shark skeleton. I drew two pages of long, flexible... Uh, flexible zippers, and noticed that a shark has no rib cage. I wondered what protected the organs or kept them in place. When Dad fell asleep on the couch again, I picked up... He's teething, so don't mind him. Hey, nobody. It's okay. Was he one of those old men with white hair like Jacques Cousteau who wore scuba suits well, well into their 80s? Um, it's okay, buddy. No. When Dad fell asleep on the couch again, I picked up the phone. I tried to picture that Vern would what Vern would look like um, on the other end. Was he one of the old men with white hair like Jacques Cousteau who wore scuba suits well into their 80s, who probably swam a mile in the ocean every morning before breakfast? Vernon Devine's phone rang six times before a woman answered. Hello, she said. Uh, hi, I'm looking for Vernon Devine. There was a pause. Which gave me thought time to realize that what an idiotic idea this was. Fern is taking a nap now. Is there a message? My name is Lucy Everhart. My mom was a shark expert who worked with Vernon Devine. Her name was Helen Ever Everhart. I found one of her research proposals from a few years ago, and I'm curious about an idea that she and Mr. Devine were working on when she died. I took a breath and wish I hadn't said the part about her dying. Yes, it would probably make the woman on the phone feel sorry for me, and I would probably have an easier time getting my message to Vernon. But something sometimes I didn't like the pity I received from people when they found out I was motherless. It made me wonder if things it made me wonder if things were worse than I thought. But the woman on the phone just kept an even voice and said, Okay. I think I have everything, she said. There was another pause. Do you know about Vern, dear? No, ma'am. I know nothing about Vern, other than the fact that he's my mother's mentor. 
He has dementia, and talking on the phone has been difficult. When he picks up the receiver, he just stands there, quiet. He might listen to the, to the things you say, but he won't say anything back. Okay, I said, um, feeling deflated. Where do you live? Oh, everyone can help me out with this. I'm going to really try. <laughs> Everyone's probably saying it out loud right now. Massachusetts. And uh, that's the best I'm going to do for that one. Would you be interested in coming to see him if it's a good day? He can be quite talkative. It's just, he it's really his short-term memory that is lacking, but he may remember your mom. My mind was racing, but my lips were totally disconnected from my brain. And I said, yes. Would you like me? It's okay. Would you like me to ask him some questions about your mother? Maybe I can gauge whether or not the trip would be worthwhile. Yes, please. All right, Lucy. I will ask him when he wakes up. Are you Miss, Mr. Devine's wife? Good Lord, no. I'm his nurse. My name is Marion. Nice to meet you, I said. That evening, I took a break from drawing sharks to pick a, at a mysterious casserole with Dad. I was separating all of the mushrooms from the noodles when the phone rang. Hello, I said. Hi, Lucy. This is Vern Devine's nurse. Marion? Hi, I said. I asked Vern about your mother this evening, and I had to call you right away. Uh-huh, I said, anxious for the rest of the story. Vern led me over to some pictures on the wall and pointed to a photo of himself and a woman on the boat. And then he pointed to another photo of the same woman. And another. And there were three pictures of the same woman on the walls of his library. And I said, who is that, Vern? And he said... That's Helen. I would say that he clearly remembers your mother. Okay, I said, not knowing what else to say. Come and see Vern, Lucy. He would love to see you, and I bet he'd be able to tell you something about your mom's project. My heart was pounding. I looked at Dad with his mummified boot perched on a chair. There was no way he could ever drive with a broken right foot, even if he wanted to. I'll think about that. Thank you, ma'am, I said. What are you thinking about? Dad asked when I hung up the phone. Nothing, I said, but it was something. Is that a nice story? Did you like that? <laughs> I'm very content right now. Um, okay, so that's the only chapter we're going to read today. Again, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that I am in the middle of grading all of your essays. They should be graded um, by the time we come back to school because I'm going to remain positive and we will get back to school. Um, I miss you all and I'm going to hop off the live stream right now so that I can go and narrate the session. Um, I think we're on session four for the historical fiction. So if you have any questions at all that you didn't understand in the slides that I sent out, please go ahead and write them in Google classroom. Um, and then also after that is done, um, Make sure you fill out the form that I had sent this morning and the, what else did you need? I think that was it. Oh, if you wanted to post your picture wearing green because it's St. Patrick's Day, go ahead and do so. Thanks for listening to the read aloud, everyone. Bye.